Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the geometric integral i, i, j. So from my flow around an airfoil video, we got an expression for the normal velocity component on the ith panel. And in the previous video, we took care of the uniform flow term, and so we ended up with this expression that's in terms of two knowns, v infinity and beta i. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the source panel term, and specifically the integral term. Uh, and so you can see here we have this partial derivative, and we need to evaluate this. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now you'll note that the term that we're looking at here depends only on the panel geometry. So I've rewritten it down here to say that i, i, j is equal to the integral term here. It depends only on the panel geometry because of this term right here, r, i, j. So I've just rewritten that i, i, j term up here. And you can see that we're trying to figure out, before we look at the integral term, we're trying to figure out what the partial derivative of this natural log is. And we can evaluate the derivative of the natural log using a known form that you can find at the back of any calculus text book. And so this will just say that the derivative of the natural log of x with respect to x is just equal to 1 over x. Or more generally, when the argument of the natural log is a function of x, we can write the derivative of the natural log of a function of x uh, with respect to x uh, is equal to 1 over f of x times the derivative of that function of x with respect to x. That's the chain rule. So we can apply this expression over here to the iij derivative term. So this term right here. And you can see that the uh, argument of the natural log is rij, and so we have 1 over rij, so that's 1 over f of x, and then drij dni, that's the df of x dx term. So now that we evaluate the derivative of the natural log, we still need to evaluate this partial derivative, where from my panel methods geometry video, we know that rij is equal to this expression, which is just the distance between the point xi, yi, xj, yj. So we're going to evaluate the partial derivative using the chain rule. So I'm going to rewrite this here, and we're taking the partial derivative of the rij term with respect to ni, and we're just going to evaluate this using the normal normal calc 1 rules. So we're going to take the 1 half power down, write that same expression, and then subtract off the 1 from the power, which is why we have a negative 1 half here. And now from the chain rule, we're going to evaluate the derivative of the inside here. So we're going to start with this. So we do 2 times xi minus xj. That's this term here. And the partial derivative comes from the fact that now we need to evaluate the derivative of the inside here. So we have dxi dni. Note that dxj dni is 0 because the uh, subscripts are not the same. Then we can do the uh, y term here. So we take, again, 2 times yi minus yj. That's this. And again, by evaluating the derivative here, we have dyi dni. That's this. And dyj dni is equal to 0. So now that we've solved for the drij dni, with, which is this big term right here, we can uh, add it into this expression here. So we need the 1 over rij. So that's what I've written down here, is this full term that's inside the integral. So first we have the drij dni. That's this numerator term. That comes from here. I've just factored out the two from both of these. So we have two outside, and then we have the inside portions of this and this. And then in the denominator, we have a two down here because of the one half. And then we also have this expression here, which is this here. Note that this is a negative one half, so we can just bring it down into the denominator. And now it's a, just a normal one half. And then since we have the one over rij, that's one over this. So that's why we have this term in the denominator again, just a one half. So note from this expression that a to the b times a to the c is equal to a to the b plus c. So down here we have a, a, these are the same term, and they're both to the power of 1 half. So we can combine these and say a, so that term, to the 1 half plus 1 half, that's just 1. So in the denominator, we can just write this uh, term without the 1 half. And also note that the 2's cancel, so I'm just going to rewrite that up here. Note this is the original integral expression. And so I've just rewritten that down here in the numerator. The 2's canceled, so we just have this inside of the brackets. That's the numerator. And then in the denominator, we just have the term inside of the brackets here, and that's this. And so this is the integral that we're solving. Note that we still have these partial derivatives in here, and that's what we're going to tackle next. So now we have the integral expression up here, and in blue we have these partial derivatives that we need to evaluate before we start going to evaluate the actual integral itself. So I've drawn panel i down here. If you don't understand these schematics, please go watch my panel method geometry video. We're going from point k to k plus 1, which means we're going around this way, so the normal vector points out perpendicular to that panel. That's ni. The angle here is delta i, and this makes sort of a triangle over, down, up, over, down, up 
differential movement in the x direction, differential movement in the y direction, differential movement in the normal direction. This angle is delta i. And from trig, we can get the cosine of delta i is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, dxi, dni. Similarly, sine of delta i is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse, dyi, dni. And so we can just plug in, because you can see these partial derivatives are the same as these up here. So we can just plug these guys in, and we end up getting the integral expression iij with the same numerator, except now instead of dxi dni, we have cosine delta i, and instead of dy i dni, we have sine delta i. Now I mentioned this in my previous video, but I'll repeat it here because it's important. Make sure your i and j indices are visible and clearly written because if you mess them up, you'll get completely wrong expressions and your panel code won't work. So we have this geometric integral iij, which is just one of the terms that's in the normal velocity equation for the ith panel. So evaluated at the ith control point. But this integral here is evaluated over the jth panel, right? This is an integral over the jth panel. So when we're doing this integration, you can see that the xi and yi points are going to stay the same. That's just the coordinate of the control point on the ith panel. But the xj and yj points are going to change as we integrate because rij, which is what this expression uh, comes from, uh, that is the distance between xi, yi, and xj, yj. But as we integrate that point, I'm just showing an arbitrary xj, yj on this panel j, that point is changing all the way from the start of the panel up to the end of the panel. So in order to more easily do this integration, what we can do is express xj and yj in terms of sj. That's the variable, that's the infinitesimal variable that we're integrating over as we integrate over the jth panel. So here I have panel j with the boundary points here and the arbitrary xj, yj coordinate here. The angle between the positive x-axis and the panel here is phi j, and the distance progress along the panel is sj. Now I'm going to call this boundary point, the start of the panel, capital xj, capital yj. And so we can rewrite the lowercase xj, yj in terms of the variables shown here. So we have xj, so we're starting at xj, and then the distance to this lowercase xj, yj uh, is this added portion right here. So distance progress, sj, times cosine of phi j, right? So that's the distance along the x direction. Similarly for the yj term, now we have the capital yj, and then we need to find out how far we moved up in the vertical to get to this point, and that's just plus sj sine phi j. Again, looking forward to the next step, note that these terms here, delta, that's delta i, these terms here, phi is phi j. Now I know that the capital X looks very similar to the lowercase x, but I'll try to make it clear when I'm writing down these subsequent equations. Now the last thing we need to do before we start getting into the integration is to convert these delta i angles into phi i angles. So we know that delta is equal to phi plus 90 degrees always. That's from my panel method geometry. And so we can write the cosine of delta that's the first one here as cosine of phi plus 90. And from a trig identity I've used a lot in the past, we get negative sine of phi. And then sine of delta is equal to sine of phi plus 90 is equal to cosine of phi. So the final equation after just plugging in this, I'm not plugging this in yet, uh, we get the expression from up here just with the negative sine phi i plugged in for this and cosine phi i plugged in for this. So the integral that we had on the previous whiteboard looks like it's good to go, but uh, it's not in a form that's easily solvable right now. So the goal of the next few whiteboards is to put that integral into a form that we can easily solve. First, we're going to look at the numerator, then we'll look at the denominator. So let's start with the numerator. We're starting with the expression from that integral expression uh, in the numerator, where I've just plugged in for those two uh, for the cosine of delta i and the sine of delta i. And now we're going to plug in for xj and yj. So that's this term and this term based off of those expressions from the previous whiteboard. So we have xi and then we have minus xj. So that's why we have minus capital xj minus uh, sj cosine phi j. Same thing for here. We have yi minus the yj term. And now we're going to distribute all the terms through. So I'm going to distribute this and this through everything in the brackets. And so we get negative xi sine phi i, and then this, this, that's all from the first term. And then the bottom here is all from the second term. And now what we're going to do is group all the terms together that are with the similar variable. So I'm going to group the sine phi i terms together, which is this with the solid blue line. 
I'm going to group all the terms with the cosine phi i term. That's the dashed purple lines here. And then I'm going to group all the sj terms, and that's with the squiggly blue line here. And so what we end up getting is the expression shown down here. So for the sine phi i expressions, we have xj minus xi. So that's here. For the cosine of phi i, we have yi minus yj, so that's this term here. And for the sj terms, we have sine phi i cosine phi j minus cosine phi i sine phi j. So I've just taken the expression from the bottom of the previous whiteboard, put it up here, it's the same thing. And we're gonna try to uh, simplify this term down in the sj portion of the equation using the following trig identity. So we're gonna plug in for this sine a minus b. Which one's a? Well, it's the sine term in the first term here, so that's phi i, b is phi j. So I'm gonna rewrite this equation down here. First thing you could see is that this looks different. It's just because I'm flipping these two and putting a negative out in front to get it in the same form as the y term here. So we have negative xi minus xj sine phi i. This stays the same, plus sj plugged in sine of phi i minus phi j. And so you can see in this equation here, the numerator takes the following form, c times sj plus d, where c is just sine of phi i minus phi j, and d is the rest of this over here. Now that we've figured out the numerator term, let's move to the denominator. Make sure you pay attention to this derivation because this denominator is the same for the tangential geometric integral for the source panel method and for both the normal and tangential uh, vortex panel method denominators. So this applies to all of them. So we're gonna start with the denominator, which is just xi minus xj squared plus yi minus yj squared. Note that these are still the lowercase xj and yj. We're going to expand both terms. So from the first term, we have xi squared minus 2xi xj plus xj squared. And then same thing from the second term. And now we're going to plug in for the xj's and the yj's from a couple whiteboards ago. And so we just rewrite the terms here. This is the xj term. This is the xj term squared. This is the yj term. This is the yj term squared. So I've just rewritten that expression up here, it's the same thing, just with the uh, xj and yj terms plugged in here. And we're just gonna simplify this top expression by expanding it out. So you can see this is xi squared here, minus 2xi xj, that's this, minus this times this, is this term. And then these last three terms are just this expanded out. Same thing on the bottom. You can see their corresponding terms just now in terms of yi and yj. And you can note that this big expression up here uh, is in quadratic form, or we can put it in quadratic form, uh, a s j squared plus b s j plus c. Note that the c here is not the same c as before. I'm just showing you what the quadratic equation looks like. Noting that instead of x, we have s j. That's the variable we're integrating over. So we can look at this expression up here, the single blue underline. That's the uh, s j squared term, the a coefficient. The double underlying lines here are corresponding to the sj or the b coefficient, and the ones that have no underline are the c coefficient. So I'm just writing out the a coefficient here, so the sj squared sine squared phi j plus cosine squared phi j, and then plus two, so I'm factoring out the two in all of these double underlined ones, and so we end up getting negative xi cosine phi j, that's here, plus xj cosine phi j here, minus yi sine phi j, plus yj sine phi j. And then the final term is the c term, which is the non-underlying terms up here. And so we can put this and this in one term, in one parentheses term, and then this and this in the second parentheses term. Okay, so there's a couple of simplifications that we can make down here. The first is this. We can use the well-known trig identity that sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to one. So this whole term is just equal to one, which simplifies down this first term to just sj squared. And then second, if you look down here, this is just an expansion of xi minus minus xj squared, and this is just an expansion of yi minus yj squared, so we'll plug those in for these two terms down here. So we can write this whole expression as this, sj squared plus two sj, and now what I'm doing is I'm combining the cosine phi j terms, so that's why we have negative xi minus xj, because this is a plus in here, so if we have a negative negative, that gives us a plus, and then for the sine phi j terms, I'm combining these as well. So we have negative yi. Again, this is a plus, so we get a minus in here, so that minus minus is a plus. And then the final term is plus this, which is xi minus xj squared plus yi minus yj squared. And this form, or this equation, takes the form of sj squared plus 2asj plus b, where a is just 
this in the brackets, and b is just this in the brackets. So we had solved for the numerator and denominator terms, so the geometric integral we're trying to solve is shown here. Iij is equal to the integral from zero to the jth panel length, or s bar j, that's from my panel method geometry video, of the numerator over the denominator. I'm just gonna write this in a more recognizable format, perhaps, by substituting in x for sj, so we have the integral of cx plus d over x squared plus 2ax plus b. Note that this x is not xi or xj, it's just to show it in a more recognizable format. And also note that a, b, c, and d are just placeholders with their definitions given on the previous whiteboards. So this form is actually not good for integrating either just yet, but we can get it into a nice form by first completing the square of the denominator. So that's why I have this here. We're gonna complete the square. You can see other videos for how to do this, but essentially we're just taking the first two terms here, and then I'm gonna take uh, the middle term, divided by two and square it, plus b, and then subtract that term as well. And so you can see the twos cancel, so we end up just having a squared here and a squared here. And so I'm gonna group this, so I have x squared plus two ax plus a squared, that's this first term, and then I have plus b minus a squared, that's the second term. And note that we can write the first part of this term as just x plus a squared, and we can write this part by substituting in, defining a value e squared, so that e is equal to the square root of b minus a squared. That's just for convenience. You don't need to do this, but it's for convenience, and you'll see this substitution in pretty much all books. So we're actually going to use u substitution to break up this integral into two separate integrals that are gonna be easier to solve. So this is just this integral up here, and from the previous whiteboard, after after completing the square of the denominator, we could replace this with x plus a squared plus e squared, so that's what this is. And now, to do u substitution, we're going to define u as x plus a, because that's what's in here. And so if I just rearrange these, I get x is equal to u minus a. And if we take the derivative of this, then we can get dx is equal to du. And so that's what I'm plugging in for here. For the x's, I'm plugging in u minus a, so that's why we have c times u minus a plus d, and then down here we have uh, u squared, because this is x plus a, so we have u squared plus e squared du, because dx is equal to du, and then I'm just going to distribute through, so we have cu, and then plus d, minus ac, all over the u squared plus e squared du. And so from the equation in this form over here, we can just break this up into two separate integrals. So that's what I've shown here. The first one is taking cu over the denominator, that's this, plus, d minus ac over the denominator here, and we'll split this up and factor out the numerators that we don't need in the integral because they're constant, and I've written these in two different colors because I'll solve these at different times, so we get this term here where I've just factored out the c, and then I factored out the d minus ac in the numerator here, so we're going to start with this integral first. So I'm just solving for that second integral term, ignoring the d minus ac that's out front, so it's just this integral here, and this integral has a known form that you can see at the back of any calculus textbook, and it's just one over e times the inverse tangent of u over e. So we're just going to plug in for u that we had to find before and evaluate the integral. So we have that here. Plugging in x plus a gives us this. We're evaluating from zero to the end of the panel, s bar j. And so we have one over e out front, and then I have this evaluated s bar j, which is just inverse tangent of s bar j plus a over e minus this evaluated at zero, where we plug in for zero here, so we just have a over e, so that's minus inverse tangent of a over e. So this is the solution for this integral. Now we can work on that first uh, integral term. So I have that up here. Note that I'm not including the c because it's a constant which we'll add back in on our final solution. So we're going to write the numerator such that it is equal to the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of the denominator with respect to u is the derivative of u squared plus e squared, is equal to 2u. So if I write the numerator such that it's this, right, so I have the integral of 2u over u squared plus e squared, to get it back to the same form as this, I just have to divide it by 2, right, because we have a 2 up here. And so we're going to define a new variable, z, similar to how we define a new variable u. We're just going to do that again. And so z I'm defining as u squared plus e squared, that's just the denominator here. So if I take the derivative of z with respect to u, we get dz du is equal to to u, and if I rearrange this by multiplying both sides by du, we get dz is equal to 2u du. So I'm just gonna plug in these z terms into this integral up here for all the u's. So you can see that we have 2u du, 
we see that 2u du is equal to dz, so that's in the numerator, and u squared plus e squared, that's this, which is z, that's in the denominator, so we have one half of the integral of dz over z, and you'll note that this is in the form of the natural log here, so this integral gives us one half still there. This is the natural log of z, and if we plug back in for z here, for the u squared plus e squared, we get one half natural log of u squared plus e squared. So now we have this expression up here, and we need to uh, plug back in for u, and then evaluate the integral from 0 to s bar j. And note from uh, quite a few whiteboards ago that we had u squared plus e squared from the initial denominator, so we turn this into this, so we can just plug that back in here, and now we'll evaluate from 0 to s bar j. So first we take the 1 half out, and then we evaluate it at s bar j, so that's why we plug in s bar j for all the x's, and then minus the evaluated term at zero, so x squared is zero, two ax is zero, so we just end up with natural log of b, and we can simplify this into a single logarithm uh, because of natural log of a minus natural log of b is equal to the natural log of a over b, so we're just gonna have one half times the natural log of this over this, so this over b, and the final step uh, is to combine these integral expressions in the dash boxes that we've solved for before to get our final geometric integral i i j, which we can write as c times this integral solution plus d minus ac times the previous integral solution. Now this was quite a long video, but we ended up with an expression for the geometric integral iij used in the normal velocity component of the ith panel. That's just a function of values that we know. So up here, the s bar j, that's just the length of the jth panel. And then down here for all of these uh, variables a, b, c, d, and e, these are all just functions of values that we know. So x, i, y, i, that's just the coordinate point of the ith panel. phi, i, and phi, j are the uh, orientations of the panels for the ith panel or the jth panel. And then x, j, and y, j are just the boundary points, the starting boundary point for the jth panel. In the next video, we will be using the normal velocity equation on each panel, each ith panel, set it equal to zero, make a system of equations, and then solve for all of the source panel strengths based off of that system of equations. Thanks for watching.